Are we going? Yeah, it's been going. Should for I do it. my retard bit for the opening? Yeah, cold open. Yeah. It's the world's first time traveling podcast. We come from the future world of 2084, where the world is ruled by people with Down syndrome. It's truly a world by retards for retards. After the fallout of World War III, President Extra Chromosome has sent us back in time to put the tards in charge before this catastrophic global collapse. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Steve and Steven. How was that? <laughs> that was good. No, it was literally. That's right. Welcome to Steven, Steven. I'm Steve. And I'm Steven. First, we're going to start off with an apology because the guest that we teased is not going to be the guest that we have today. We don't have a guest at all today. Ben Shapiro canceled on our yes. interview. He well, canceled. He, he is no stranger to cancel culture. So he jumped to his website, The Daily Wire, and um, added his latest flub to his list of stuff that he has done, stupid stuff that he's done. You're seeing it on your screen right now. Okay, and just um, before you start, just to be clear, Ben... Didn't give us a phone call, didn't send us a text message, no email, no tweet, nothing. We actually, one of our fans let us know that this, what you're about to read, mm -hmm. that's how we found out Ben wasn't coming on. Yes. Maybe. Go ahead. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> well, we, because. Uh, that's how I found out. Well, here, here's what happened. I'll tell you what happened. I guess okay. it's kind of true. Um so he says here, so here's a giant list of all the dumb stuff I've ever done. And so flaking on Steven Steven. At the top of this list is my most recent and probably stupidest thing I've done. I promised two upcoming podcasters that I'd go on their show for a civil conversation about free speech. But instead, I stood them up. I was a complete jackass and forgot that they were operating on Western time instead of Eastern. And we told them that. We, you know, we said, hey, Ben, I know we're in Florida. I know we're using Eastern time. But, um, you know, we're from we're from L.A., so mm -hmm. can you please just use... I know you used to be uh, in L.A., so let's just use Western time for old time's sake for you. Yeah. And he said he would do it. So he forgot about that. So he said he showed up to do the interview three hours early, uh, and after 20 minutes, he left. So, yeah, he, he definitely flubbed up on that. So then he said, I wrongly went to Twitter and he called us some pretty, some pretty nasty stuff. I, you know, it's in that Both article. Of us? Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, the, the F word, the new F word, the R word. And, um, you know, the final one that Joe Biden apologized for saying the N word. Yes. He said that hard R those tweets. He says those tweets have since been deleted and we at the daily wire have sent Stephen and Stephen or sorry, Steve and Steven <laughs> left yeah. his tears mugs, which we're waiting for. And while we're at it, I wouldn't mind uh, um, the special edition of What is a Woman on Blu-ray that comes with a poster of Matt Walsh in a dress, as well as a signed copy of the book. Then we might consider accepting your apology. Yeah, I'm just asking for a big chunk of change, Ben. I want you to be on the podcast, though. So yeah, I'm willing to change my mind. Yes, if, if we, could, we might up. have to have Steven Crowder on first to change our mind. Then we can have Ben Shapiro on, mm. which you can't have a third Steven, though. Um, yeah, we can't do that. Th three Stevens is one Steven too many. It is. That's what I've always said. It truly, truly is. So now we got some news to talk about. Do we want to go? We'll go into the feature story. I guess this is new to both of us, to both of our realms. Mm -hmm. The one of the bands that we both like to listen to, we're going to go see them in concert when this tour kicks off the garden. They released their new album, Horse Shit on Route 66, came out last Friday, and, um, you know, it was really good. I really liked it. What were your thoughts? Well, I'll say this. We are both huge garden heads. Mm -hmm. Gardeners. We're huge gardeners. That's what they call their fan base. And we live in Southern California. They're from Southern California. But we are such big fans that we are flying to, to see them. So that's where we'll be going. But okay, my thoughts on the album. You know, you go first. Okay. Um, I actually read this Esquire piece that interviewed both of them, and it kind of gave a little bit more context about the album. 
And this doesn't really change my opinion on anything except for one of the tracks that I initially wasn't a huge fan of, but ended up liking a little bit more. But basically they were just trying to channel their interest in like the supernatural, which is very apparent on that, on their first track, the yeah. haunted house on Zillow. And, um, I don't know. I guess my initial thoughts were that I really, really liked the album. The first album that I jumped on board with was Kiss My Super Bowl Ring from 2020. I only listened to that album because Ariel Pink was on it. And, um, you know, I at first I was like, I cannot listen to this. I There's just, you know, it just it's too heavy. There are certain parts of the songs that sound like they're normal songs, but then it just gets way too heavy. But then I was like, you know, I'll, I'll listen to it again and maybe my thoughts on it will change. And it eventually did. I ended up liking the album quite a bit. And then I listened to their older stuff, which is not heavy at all. And so it is kind of weird how Kiss My Super Bowl Ring was randomly just a very heavy album. And this album is also pretty heavy, but I feel like they have done a much better job at kind of transitioning between like their signature sound and then just this like much more heavier punk sound. So I... Actually, my notes here said that the Haunted House on Zillow, I think that is my favorite opening track on any of their albums. That's a good take. And um, the thing I was just talking about, uh, you know, blending the super abrasive sound and then like their regular sound, I think they do a really good job on that with the second track, OC93. Third track, I said was my least favorite song on the album, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Fright Yard or Freight Yard <laughs> or Freight Yard even. Freight Yard um, I put was their most normie friendly track and it was a pretty I guess it was like a promising single that was the first single that they released on the new album and I thought oh wow maybe this is you know are they like going back to uh, like Mirror Might Steal Your Charm or um, Ha Ha like you know are they dialing it back a little bit but then the second single that they released I believe was the Orange County Punk Rock Legend yeah and, you know, the, at the beginning of that song, I was thinking like, OK, wow, I guess they're really just they're scrapping all of their last album. But then, you know, when the vocals kick in, it's like, OK, OK, cool. I actually I like this a lot. I liked how different that song was. And I don't know. Orange County punk rock legend. Yeah. So that yeah, that was my favorite song on the album. I don't know. I like the see, and I'm going to sound stupid because I don't know like music terminology, but I like the almost like the sugar ray, like the. OK, nah, that's nah, did nah, you nah. read that article? No, no, no. no. That's, that's just what, what it reminded me. OK, of. Yeah, I haven't read that's, anything. What the, that's what the guy in the article said. And they were saying that like they I guess uh, Wyatt, he's the one who plays guitar on it. He said that um, he was like listening to sugar ray probably around the time they were recording and said that he likes them. And so he was like, I didn't intend on it sounding like Sugar Ray, but I guess that's just the sound that came of it. But yeah, it totally does sound like that. That's what it, it did remind me of some like 90s, um, I guess, punk music, which I guess was prominent in Orange County in the 90s. But yeah, sorry, go keep going. No, no, no. Um, so yeah, I liked that element to it. By the way, I like Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray is like one of those groups that got like commercial success and that everybody... Mm -hmm started shitting on them but i think they've got some like fun pop punk songs i don't know but uh so yeah that's probably my favorite one i like a lot more the like the screaming stuff mm -hmm. or the shouting i guess if you want to call it that like that they've introduced in the last few ones because the ariel pink one i mean you're gonna remember that better mm -hmm. than me but which track was that on well it was in a lot well the track that had ariel pink was low rider slug and mm -hmm. the screaming was in pretty much every single track. And the first track, it starts off, um, I don't remember what the name of the track is, um, A Clench to Stay Awake. It's like a very slow and like somber song. And then it kind of picks up a little bit and then it just like cranks all the way up and they just like go full screamo before the song even ends. And then the second track starts with the continuation of that screamo. And then the rest of the album is a little all over the place, but it's still good. I, I do really like it. It just took me a, like a few listens for it to finally kind of click for me. And then it was much easier for me to listen to their earlier albums just because it was, you know, wasn't as screamo -y. But I, I definitely am very glad that they embraced that sound for this album and uh, didn't shy away from it. And I feel like that's that's like why I like them so much, because I, I think you can always rely on them to just make whatever they're going to make. And they're, it doesn't seem like they're going to try to make a sound that that everyone's going to enjoy or everyone's going to like. And so I feel like those are the types of bands that like I kind of gravitate towards. 
Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll have a little bit more analysis. Let me run through the songs mm-hmm. because actually I was going to talk about all the same songs you brought up. I liked the opening, Haunted House on Zillow. I like the spooky vibes to it. Um, and then OC93 is probably my second favorite track. And then the third track, Puerta de Limosina, was probably my least favorite. But then on the second time around, I liked it a lot more. And mm-hmm. then even what you said about Freight Yard, I agree. It's like more palatable. It's like a less punk and less avant-garde than some of their other stuff is. So all around, I love the album. So it is short, though. It is 24 minutes. It is. But I also, uh, I forgot. My favorite track is uh, track six, What Else Could I Be But a Jester. That's definitely my favorite song on the album. The Garden has like all the same sensibilities as me because they just have like (laughs) all the clown stuff. Mm -hmm. And I love clowns. And now they're going for a spooky vibe. Did I just tell you this week, my favorite holiday is Halloween. Mm-hmm. It's coming up, folks. It's, sep- it's September. That means it's right around the corner. It, 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 that, it, fall, like September, October, even November. Yeah, Halloween, Thanksgiving. That's like my favorite time of the year, like hands down. It's just, I don't know, it's so nice. The change is, is just great. Let's hear it for the seasons now. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to just, now that this album's out, I was going to give you my three favorite garden albums. And so number four, I'm going to give you number four because it's bumped off now. But ha ha, I love it because there's like 17 unique songs, but they all have like kind of the same vibe and sound to it. And I like that about the garden because they kind of create like a cohesive sound through the entire album. Because even Mm -hmm. though they're very experimental, they kind of weave that entire experimental side into every song. So Mm -hmm. it's like a cohesive album. But and then this album, Horse Shit on Route 66, probably number three. Mirror Might Steal Your Charm from 2016 is number two. And it kind of doesn't count, but it does. You Want the Scoop, which was an EP. It's only like 17 minutes. Mm -hmm. But that's my my favorite Garden albums. Yeah, I guess if I were to take out like only their albums and not include the EP, I think, oh gosh, it'd be tough. I I might, well, this one has the highest rating. It might be my favorite. This may change, but I think it's my favorite album of theirs. My second would probably be mirror might steal your charm third would honestly be uh i guess if you want the scoop was included i would i'd put that at number three and then kiss my super bowl ring and then ha ha but i also still really like ha ha um it's funny ha ha out of their solo work do you have a favorite do you prefer puzzle or enjoy i think my take has always been that well, okay, so I'll say this. I did rank all three. I'm not even going to read them. I will tell you that I like Puzzle more, but I think another word for joy by enjoy is probably the best of all their so- solo stuff. I can't even like add anything to that because that's kind of that's exactly how I feel. I I might like Tighten the Reins a little bit more than another word for joy, but both of those albums are really good. But yes, I would I would value another word for joy over most of puzzles work because yeah it is a really good album tighten the reins is three for me i might as well just read this because this is this is the garden <laughs> segment yeah anybody that listens to the garden and finds this is going to be like wow they're actually having discussion about because there's not a lot there's not even the reviews rest- like i didn't yeah. even see a review i googled like a review for it and nothing even came up they uh they put it on their instagram page that's the only way i found it but i like tighten the reins and then second i like is it laying in the sand? That's what I wrote. But is that was it lying in the from, sand? From from uh, a puzzle? Yeah, yeah. And then exhale. But laying in the sand. So like some of their albums have more sentimental value. Like Ha Ha is off the top three now, but mm-hmm. that was the first album I was introduced to. So like yeah. that's probably the one I've listened to the most mm-hmm. of their of the garden. And, and then that- laying in the sand, I've listened to a lot, and I like I like more sentimental value. But I like exhale. I think it's the best for a puzzle. So. Mm. Yeah, I think Tighten the Reins is my favorite. Um, I'm trying to think of the other ones. He had a new one that came out, I think, in 2020. I enjoyed that one. Uh, I listened to Exhale, but I don't really remember what that sounded like, to be quite honest with you. Um, what's the one where... Oh, Soaring. That's another popular one. I, I liked that one, but I don't know. Yeah, people who are going through they're going to find this podcast they're going to find we're talking about the garden they're going to be like oh wow that's so cool then they're going to be like what the rest of this podcast is just racist what the heck yeah yeah, yeah. it will ruin it will ruin that for them <laughs> sorry but just, listeners. just listen to this one segment see yeah. the idea is if we talk about enough stuff we'll, we'll get an audience here and the yeah. garden has a huge audience they're huge 
They do. How many Spotify monthly listeners do they have? I think it's actually around a million. It's not. I don't know. This is one of these things that I've always wished I could get like advanced stats on just straight to my brain or somewhere. Yeah, and yes. it's just them is I would love to know how many they have 960,000 monthly listeners. I would love to know like how many monthly listeners a band or a group had when I like discovered it. And then like, oh, yeah, when I found it because they had to have been under 100,000 or something. I mean, they really didn't even have that many. The garden itself didn't have very many releases when I first found it. So when did, when did you first find them? It was in 2016. So mm. that uh, would have been just like when Haha ha was out. Yeah. yeah. Um, OK. And then the music videos. Have you watched a lot of their music videos? I have watched a handful of their music videos. Yes, I did watch the new one, the Orange County punk rock legend. I really like that one. But like you were saying, I like the the clowns, the jesters, the, how they're very prominent in a handful of them. I also really like, uh, I think uh, I saw an angel is like their most popular, even though that's puzzle. I like that music video too. But And then the lounge thoughts. That was a recent single from Enjoy that I really liked. But I don't think there. I've seen that yet. Um, I like Call This Number Now. I mm-hmm. think it's very funny music video and a funny song. And then Thy Mission with Mac yeah. DeMarco. That one is like all-time music video ever. It's that, just very honestly, funny. It, basically, if you haven't seen it, it's just like a parody of like tabloid TV of like the Jerry Springer show mm-hmm. kind of thing. And Mac DeMarco's in it. And it's just, yeah, it's a great collab. So I love that song. Love that music video. Yeah, it's a freaky music video too. It's it, it's like the, I don't know, it, it gets weird without getting like too weird. I feel like some bands like MGMT, they try to be weird, but they just like go way too far where it's like, I don't know, you clearly just like took psychedelics and wrote stuff down and then committed yourself to whatever you wrote down and put it in your video you it's i fucking hate mgmt dude we don't want to offend people with a lot of crossover there's gotta be a lot of people that were up up with us up to this point you know and then now they're gonna be like you don't like also do they pronounce it management because that's what i don't think so i don't think they do everyone that i know has said i've always said mgmt but i've never asked is what i call them even I, though I, I don't dislike mgmt so if you were thinking about closing out of this podcast because um steve over here <laughs> and i guess let me elaborate MGMT. i need to elaborate i i think i have their recent album at like a four or something i like their their music but as people they suck because you know their big comeback they have to they weren't gonna make a comeback if it wasn't for ariel pink he did a lot of work on that album and then after the Capitol debacle, they just like threw him, you know, they just pretended like they didn't know who he was. And um, so they can go suck a dick for that. But other than that, their music is good. Um, Back to the garden. Yeah. Fuck them. But I still like their music. <laughs> the garden. No, not fuck the garden. Um, yeah. So I love them. I like the Vada Vada stuff. I think it's like a funny kind of parody of like Dada, which mm-hmm. is always funny to say because it's Dada. 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 Mama. Da, da. So it's funny because they're like, to me, they're like a true punk band. Mm-hmm. And like now punk music got like, there really wasn't, hasn't been like a lot of punk music since like the nineties. And a lot of it was like either, either they became like commercialized, like a green day, which I'm not saying I liked before, but like very commercialized or they just kind of die out or I don't know. So that there's either, it's probably been like underground, but punk has just been very, like there's Stale. way more emphasis in our culture on the mainstream music. Like everyone seems to listen to that. So mm-hmm. normies maybe won't like the garden. Right. Um, and then I like obviously the avant-garde element, which is maybe what makes them less palatable to the general yeah. public. But I don't know. I didn't think it was really that hard to use to if you're, if you're not used to that. Like if you only listen to mainstream music. So I don't know. Yeah, I think... Especially this new album. I don't know. I mean, actually, I think all their albums. I mean, it's not like it's not like early Animal Collective where it's like, oh, you have to sit through a 13 minute song. That's actually not a song. It's just noises. I mean, they the songs are easy to listen to. And but yeah, I guess I get what you mean, where some of the avant garde elements could, you know, throw some people off and make it to where they don't want to listen to the whole thing. But I mean, the thing I just like about them the most is that yeah, you just don't really know what they're, what sound they're going to make next. You know, it, like I said, it, it really just feels like they just do what they do. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. You know, there's no like stupid, I don't know. I really tried to blah, 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 channel my inner happiness on that. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like when they're working, they just 
here's what I have. Okay, here's what I have. Okay, th that's the album. Okay, cool. Here we go. We're done. You know what I mean? It's not like this, like, what statement are we making? Yeah, and I feel like even when you hear like a mainstream artist or something that says, oh, you know, this was some like important bullshit to me. Like you can't really tell. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with the garden, you can always kind of tell that they're being like authentic to whatever they're interested in. Like, yeah, they're clearly like there are new sounds like from album to album, especially like on their solo stuff when they were making like rapid fire albums one after another. Mm -hmm. They always like introduce new sounds or whatever. Like maybe they got like a new bass or something and there's like new wobbly wobble sound. Right. Um, that's a music term. <laughs> and they always introduce that stuff. So you can tell there's like some interest or whatever. And I feel like also too, because they release so much music, you can kind of see their evolution. Yeah. More than you can with like a regular artist that releases one album every three years or yeah. whatever it is. And I think the other part to that too, is because they started making music when they were so young. So then now that they've gotten much older, you can kind of see how they've aged throughout and just how their sound has developed. And I don't know. Yeah. They're just a great, just a really good band. I think they've got to be like, I mean, I know not in popularity, but like top, 10 best artists right now my all-time favorite thing of of or whatever is just them uh with kyle, kyle mclaughlin in that like uggs photo shoot or whatever i have not seen that i knew they were models but yeah yeah the photo with kyle mclaughlin's hilarious which if you don't know who kyle mclaughlin is you're living under a rock get the f out of here he's dale cooper from twin peaks so now I have to show Steve this photo because it's a great photo. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, that's like a great, like they for sure have watched <laughs> Twin Peaks probably. Yeah, yeah. That is so funny. I love that. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Closing remarks on the garden. No, I think I think we beat it to death. I think that was pretty good. So yeah. I'm excited to see them in concert and it, it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited too. All right. On to the next thing. We've got a couple of short news things, I guess. I don't know. Nintendo, for all you gamers out there, mm. um, they had their new direct, which I guess is like a little showcase of games that are coming out. I tuned into the live stream literally as they were showing the new Zelda trailer and um this game has been delayed for like two years now. And this newest trailer was like 30 seconds long and it literally like reveals like nothing new, nothing that we don't already know. And I feel like it's just going to suck, which is kind of a downer. But I think the current state of gaming is just it just sucks. Like games just suck now. I don't know. What do you think about the name of the new Zelda game? I don't even remember what it was called. I read Tears, it. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom. That's what it was. Yeah. 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 I had it in my notes too. I don't it's know, coming man. in May 2023. I don't know. I mean, I thought Breath of the Wild sounded weird, but then I played it and it made sense. So I'm probably going to buy this game and still play it. So maybe it will eventually make sense. But in the first trailer, it made it seem like there was going to be like co op where like Link and Zelda would both be playable characters. And then in the new trailer, it only shows Link. So it makes me think that they've just like scaled back on, you know, the first trailer was like, we're going to be super ambitious and add all this stuff. But there was gameplay, too. But the new trailer makes me think they might just get rid of a lot of features that they initially were teasing. But I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope the game is good. But I just feel like after however many years, they probably began development right after Breath of the Wild because it's the same exact game engine and it looks like it's the same exact map. Like they're going to add on to it, which is like, I, I'm curious to see how that's going to work. And um, I don't know. I just don't have a good feeling about it. And then there was this other thing, like all the new Resident Evil games are coming to the Switch through cloud gaming. Do you have any thoughts on cloud gaming? I don't even know what that is, honestly. That's like where you're connected to the internet the whole time and you're just like playing they get you're like streaming the game isn't that okay well that's so what happened like if your internet's out you just can't play the game right, at but all games are still going to be just as expensive and all that shit, or... now it's like a service like netflix it's like it's like netflix oh, but for games you pay so. however much and then you might have to buy the game though like for for the switch they don't have like a cloud gaming platform it was just like the resident evil game so i would assume that yes you have to pay per game but either way, 
I don't know. I, I feel like the end game for gaming or like the future of where it's going, it's going to just, it's going to be that. Like you buy whatever console and then all the games are streamed. I mean, I think a lot of games are trying to get rid of offline play. They're just trying to phase it out. And I don't know, that sucks. Cause I, I don't really like playing games with people. I don't really like having to rely on them to also know how to play the game unless it's like couch co-op. Yeah. But I don't know. Do you play any games? No, I, I've thought about it and this isn't like me bragging, but I've been thinking about what if I got the new Pokemon game in November and I haven't played, mm. I bought, so when I bought my Switch, which I've played for less than 30 hours total and I've had it for like a year and a half, <laughs> I got that fucking Pokemon uh, sword or shield, whichever one it is, and I hated it. So I don't know. I don't remember why I changed my mind, but I was thinking about about it but no i don't game too much so i don't know it's just awful ever since games have been able to receive updates too <laughs> it's like they just release a game that's not even complete like okay another thing from the nintendo direct was like and finally coming to wii sports golf so it's like they release this game that has like three sports and it's like oh well just wait a while then we're gonna add soccer and then golf it's like they just they give you half the food and then they're just dropping crumbs for you to eat and it's just so stupid. I don't know. And it's also weird how many remakes now like make up the video game economy. It's like half the games that I am interested in are remakes of games that I've already played before. I don't know. I'm Be looking at the new games now to see what I'm biting I would get. a dead horse. I'm really biting a dead horse what here. About Fire Emblem. I've actually never played a Fire Emblem game. I haven't either. Maybe I played like a really old one on game boy or something i'm seeing what else is coming out here um i don't know what the fuck all this stuff is none of this sounds cool it all has weird names some final fantasy bullshit mario plus rabbits which i never got that video game series it just yeah. plopped onto rayman didn't it mm -hmm. it just showed up in a rayman was no, it rayman? Ray no rap i know there was rayman raving rabbits and but i think the rabbits the rabbits the rabbit rabbits is this true? Yeah, I think so. I remember that being a game for the Wii. I don't know if the rabbits or Did the rabbits... Did they get their start there? Like the minions got their start? Yeah, and... yeah, that's what I think it is. It's okay. like a Mario plus minions, yeah. Rayman raving rabbits. Oh, also there's rabbits. this... Uh, I forgot about this. There's this game. It's called like Multiverse. It's like Super Smash Brothers. Oh, but with the DC yeah, and like HBO. Warner Brothers. Yeah. Did you hear that uh, like Velma from Scooby-Doo, her like final smash was like gathering enough evidence and like a cop car comes and like arrests the <laughs> opponent. Yeah. And people just, they just kept <laughs> uploading videos of like Velma versus LeBron James and just like LeBron James getting arrested. So <laughs> they took the, they changed like her final smash. <laughs> LeBron James should go to jail, by the way. Yeah. F that guy. Seriously. I don't even, I don't know why, but. Um, Nintendo 64 games they're bringing. There you go. Yeah. Here you go. Games from 30 years ago. You know, but I am one of these kind of nostalgia gamers if I game at all because I don't get into new games. They're just like the things I liked when I was like six. That's also true. But I think, well, the best way to go about that is like a PC with an emulator because the, with Nintendo, well, they did have like the, the NES classic, like the SNES classic. And those were cool because you could like hack those and add more games to them. But now for the Nintendo 64, you have to buy um, like the online service so it's like eventually it's going to run out they're going to stop you know paying to have those servers up and it's like not a permanent way to play those old games and that's the thing that also bothers me all right there's no game here that really has me interested no. but as i said i'm not a. I mean just dance 2023 it's like who the f is buying that i don't know also how does that even work on the switch the Switch has motion controls. The Joy-Cons are like Wii remotes. So, but your legs are relevant. Originally, it wasn't just Dance. Or am I thinking of Dance Dance Revolution? Dance Dance Revolution is what you're thinking of. Okay, so That's a game I'd play again. New Mario Strikers, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. What are they, just new courses? Yeah. That's the game that's already out, right? Mm -hmm. Pikmin 4? I never played any of the Pikmin. I haven't either. But it doesn't look fun. Okay, well, that was Nintendo talk, I guess. I don't yeah. really have anything else to say. The End Zone. Uh, did you see that independent counsel guy for the Clinton investigation? Ken Starr died. He was mm -hmm. like, 
I don't know what he was. The independent counsel, whatever the fuck that means, for during the Clinton, like, Lewinsky scandal. He died. He was 76. I was oh, throwing wow. that out there. I'm not hmm. even implying anything yeah, like yeah, he yeah. was killed. But why would they not kill him? Right. I don't know. I mean, it's years removed, but it's like they're probably bored, too. Like, the Clintons aren't really doing anything. Hillary's probably just now realizing she's not going to run for office. Yeah. Kill a guy for the fuck of it. <laughs> um, Feel alive again. Brett Favre, NFL legend, quarterback. Do you know what team he played for? The Vikings. No, well, he did. Minnesota he retired Vikings. with the Vikings. He played two seasons with the Vikings, a year with the Jets, but for like 17 years or whatever, he was with the Packers. Oh. He is uh, getting sued for millions of dollars because he apparently took millions of dollars in a welfare fund scam. And like these hmm. text messages were released of him with the former governor, Phil Bryant. Anyway, Brett Favre taking a bunch of money from poor people. He's probably in deep doo-doo. <laughs> Dang, based. So, all-time uh, pervert, too. Sent his oh. to, I'm a Packers fan, by the way, so I don't think I'm going too hard on Brett. Dude sent his dick to a cheerleader, so if you don't know about that, Google Brett Favre penis images, <laughs> and it'll be... It'll be a good re uh, return on investment. Yeah, the only thing I uh, followed sports related was the what Aaron Rodgers when he got in trouble for not being vaccinated. He went on like a press tour and then they he lost did. this first week. It was pretty bad. They mm. lost in week one to the Vikings. But yeah, he went on Rogan and he went on some other guy's podcast where they basically kissed the whole time. <laughs> fueling the Aaron Rodgers gay rumors all mm. over again. Then, um, you know, I actually never knew. Okay, so I, I assumed that, that, sorry, that Joe Rogan was not vaccinated. But when I listened to the the episode he had with Ben Shapiro, like last November, that was the first time I'd probably listened to maybe since the vaccine came out, at least like 15 episodes. And that was the first one where it was brought up that he wasn't vaccinated. And he like agreed, like said he wasn't. I feel like for the, for the longest time, he was kind of indirectly implying that he wasn't. But I feel like he said it, but I, I don't know because because he was like he's talked a lot about the this is experimental. Yeah. And all this stuff. I mean, and the vaccine's a joke. But anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah. Rogan's not vaccinated. So. So House of Stools made by Millmore at Barstool. So I'm the Barstool guy around here. These parts. <laughs> I know everything about Barstool. And uh, I'm a big Dave Portnoy guy. So, Dave, if you're listening, just know that I want to... I'm not going to say it. House of Stools was like this animated thing. So you watched it. I watched both episodes, yeah. You said you had questions. So maybe you'll start with the questions. Because my takeaway is the story's not very good. But mm -hmm. it is... Oh, and here, here's some of the background, too, okay, with House of Stools. Okay, that's what I was wondering. The ho House of Stools is a parody of... Not just Game of Thrones. Like, they're trying to do a Game of Thrones-style thing. But before Game of Thrones, or, I'm sorry, before this House of Stools, there was, a few years ago, the NBA did a thing called Game of Zones. And it was okay. just, like, following the drama from the NBA season. And, like, basically what it does is it just, like, sprinkles all these references in that you would have to watch it, like, ten times yeah, to pick yeah. up every reference. So they did a really good job of that in House of Stools, mm -hmm. because there's all these references, you know, Liz gets hit by the carriage while in her life she got hit by a car. And yeah, there's a lot of funny bits. I don't want to just read them because they were, they were funny, they were good references, but the story was kind of lacking. But uh, Millmore, this guy Barstool, generally just makes these weird things. He, he makes a lot of the like, oh, it's gonna NFL be- NFL graphics? <laughs> no, he'll do like a scene from, uh, what's that <laughs> Mel Gibson? Uh, wow, I'm gonna sound really retarded here Braveheart. Braveheart 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 okay. Jesus um and you know and then oh maybe he'll edit it and just put like Dave's face over okay. him and put which is ironic because Dave's Jewish mm -hmm. Mel Gibson and Mel Gibson Jews. has some yeah he's got some views views on the Jews and that's that's for sure you know he'll make those kind of edits but they're kind of funny or whatever they're mm -hmm. good for the internet they go viral so to speak <laughs> so I didn't have much to say on it I thought it was funny the references were funny um what about okay? So the everyone I I read the comments and they were saying the animation, the the text to speech. They said it had to be text to speech. Yeah. Why? Do you know why? Did like is that an inside joke that I wouldn't know about? Um. No. I I know. I don't know. Did I don't know if they meant it how they meant it either. Do they mean it like 
but it was like a computer that was all of their voices. No, no, I got I got that that's what was happening in the video. I just didn't realize that it would have to be that way. They mean like for practical reasons because they wouldn't get everybody's voice. I don't know. I mean, just let have me, somebody do voice act for it. I mean, there's probably somebody there. One yeah, of the, that's kind of the thing I didn't like about it. I thought was kind of stupid about it. Um, see, I wasn't also sure. I was like, are we like, are we on this or are we talking about and so i was like yeah i'll just write whatever i think no i mean the animation was the story like i'm not really taking a you know you can make fun of it if you want there was like just a lot of inside jokes which is like how game of zones was but mm -hmm. it's not like particularly good content well but it was dave's idea too so like he mentioned that on uh, his show a few weeks ago where he's like because somebody talked to somebody he didn't want to talk to you guys know ben mints He's talking to somebody that Dave hates and all the stuff. So Dave's like, oh, it's like Game of Thrones around here. Oh, okay. And the next thing you know. Oh, I know. It's like Game of Thrones around here. Look at all the floppy flop. <laughs> phone. That's why I said you sit in a phone. But yeah, and then Damn. the other funny reference was like Dave... <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to cut that out. When I, I can just see like me editing like later, and then I like make that joke, and then just like seeing the audio wave. It's like three seconds of silence, and like oh, shit. I mean, I know you're not supposed to laugh at that if you didn't think it was funny, but it's just another it's funny to me. Another Dave uh, funny reference, haha, was him basically doing the like, you know, there's lunatics on both sides, which sort of sounds like the Trump thing. When he's like, there's mm -hmm. good people, but, but Dave's thing, you know, is because he's I'm so not political. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I hate people on both sides. I hate both extremes. So that's like part of the Dave bingo because I've always said there's like, how many cubes are in a bingo thing? 25, five by five. Mm -hmm. I've always said you could probably put like Dave's like 25 most commonly said things and just do like a Dave bingo card and you'll like hear him say all those things. Like we started off as, originally we started off as a gambling newspaper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, I'm done with the Dave impressions. I'm done with talking about uh, Barstool. Okay, yeah, so what I wrote, it kind of reminded me of, like, those, uh, like, those Wojak, um, animations. They're, like, YouTubers, like, Princes and Bobway, uh, Zero Budget Stories, and Lord Wojak. Um, but the thing that I did not like about those videos, the Barstool Sports, Game of Bones, uh, House of Stools, was that, um, I feel like with the Wojak animations, those are, uh, how do I... It's like, okay, Wojak was like created in Microsoft Paint. So that in of itself is already like low quality. So to like put it in like a real world and like animate it, obviously it's not going to look good. And that's kind of the style and like the charm of the whole thing is that it's not supposed to look super fleshed out. But if you take something bad and you make it like you animate it in a way that's good, I think that looks better. Where with this, you know, they're like, let's be funny. We'll do the text to speech voice. Like everyone's voice is a robot, but we're still going to hire a, a graphic design department to like draw all these, all this stuff. And it's, it just reminds me of like how some people uh, not too long ago were trying to emulate like the crappy style of the internet. But since they had like funding that would back whatever projects, it just ended up looking really shitty. You know what I mean? Like they're just trying to emulate. I will say like the character designs being all and stuff is like something like those characters were drawn like a long time ago like when Barstool okay so was like it is poor. the real so they're like using the old characters okay so with, those are real those are like actually old fo like drawings yeah, yeah. okay so that kind of destroys my argument about it but that answers my my big question too okay yeah you were destroyed with facts and reason and <laughs> logic and because ben shapiro isn't here i had to do it yeah that's true he wasn't here to do it Oh, one of the things they talked about, too, on there, and this is kind of interesting, is this Kirk Minahan guy. Kirk, I don't want to wrong you. I know you're listening. Big fan. Kirk Man Minahan, he's this guy at Barstool. He just, like, keeps to himself or whatever, and he just starts, like, drama sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm going to describe him. He, he, like, started a true crime podcast, and he started, like, investigating this crime that was just, like, closed. And he was like, we need to, like, figure out, look into this guy or whatever. And then, like, because of that, police reopened the case and found out that this guy that they let go was actually guilty. Oh, wow. Or like didn't charge him originally. Now he's charged. Huh? So he like solved the mystery. So damn. And they made a reference in there. Okay. I'm off of that. Does it really matter? Not as much as this video here. My recommendation, Joe Rogan and Ben Shapiro discuss marijuana use. When was this? Here, was this an old video? Conservative Three years ago. Moved in one way or another. When? Have they, I mean, I Three years ago. My personal values probably haven't shifted very much, but 
Uh, 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 my opinions haven't changed. Like for much. example, let's say for example, Stephen and Stephen, they want me to go on their podcast. Well, um, they, we have agreed upon a set of uh, defined rules where um, I will still use Western time, even though I don't live uh, on the uh, on the West. He stutters so much. Everyone's like, "Wow, he's so fast!" But he low his brain is always loading. I try to watch his show, and he's like, "Okay." Okay, I'm gay. Uh, yeah, it's annoying, but I won't, I won't say that to his face, but I will I say won't. a lot of other stuff to his face. I will say, you know what I'll say to his face? I'll say, Ben, thank you so much, one, for the free mugs, and two, for coming on the show. How about that season does. assist we got from Tim Pool, though? That was f***ing wild. <laughs> the death threat. It was more of a death threat. He, It's well, what he said, uh, you know, when the guy removed his hat, he was like, I will f*** you up. I can't. I typed in Tim Hat on YouTube. <laughs> What uh, if uh, underneath talk? Tim Pool's beanie, it was just like a pocket pussy head or something? <laughs> he just has a pussy on top of his head. That would be hilarious. What if he had hair? Then why are you wearing the beanie, bro? I know. Why are you wearing that beanie, baby? Yeah, I'm going you- to take your hat. Are you being Are you being serious or is that a joke? I don't know what a joke is. Take his hat. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Do you you hear what he was saying? Take initiative of the word bigot. They are the real bigots. That's what he said before. Oh my God. And then they have to have this funny edit. Oh wow, it's so funny. All right, you'll have to add this in or something, right? (laughs) He's like seething. If you take my beanie. He's like in flight mode. He's like, if you touch me. It's like, I technically didn't touch you. I touched the beanie on your yeah. head, motherfucking. It's not an extension. And then, of course, here we go. We've got another funny edit of Batman, uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, we'll see what I do with this in post. Will I scrap it entirely? Will I keep the tin can audio? This is, this is the big news from last week, but we didn't. But we were on vacation yeah. last week. Yeah, we were waiting outside Ben and Shapiro's house. Obama, he went back to the White House for his official portrait. Um, I hate the portrait. I think it looks stupid. Basically, he's in front of a white background. Yeah, he looks like a Fortnite character. <laughs> Which, and he does. He looks like Unreal Engine 5. He does. And he's wearing a silver tie, which he never wore a silver tie, which I don't know why that bothers me, but it does. Yeah. Like, I feel like he wears blue and red and every other president. No presidents had silver tie on in a photo. And it looks just generated in some like AI glossy art bullshit. It doesn't look like a real portrait, so I don't like it. And then I don't like Michelle's either because it looks sort of slavey. Wait a minute. What's this one? I Michelle, remember I remember this one coming out. Uh, did they did they get two photos? Did they get two portraits? No. Is this what is that from? From 2009 is what it said. I mean, this one is like at least cool because it's like he's embracing no, his homosexuality. No, because that wasn't like his official photo. You know, like Trump's official photo. He looks like somebody just told me he could go to McDonald's or something where he's just like... <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's what Trump's photo looks like. But yeah, Michelle <laughs> looks a little slavey. In I hers. can have I can has cheeseburger. Uh, like a reconstructionist era painting of Michelle Obama. It's very weird. It's like I'm out of slavery now. I'm in this dress. <laughs> First thing I'm gonna do is get me a painting of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know what the freaking heck that photo is. It doesn't say anything. It's just. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Visual portraits of Barack Obama. So, yeah, do you get a photo during your presidency? I don't know. The one of Michelle looks even worse. This The one of Michelle has the white background. I don't know. They must have done multiple things. I don't know how they decide what the final official one is. They should get a comic book. The one I've seen doesn't. Yeah, yeah. They should do Marvel, like the style of Marvel yeah. or something. They get their own Marvel cameo. Uh, Spider-Man. Uh, uh, I'm here to suck your dick. Uh, <laughs> Spider-Man, I won't tell. I won't tell that you're Peter Parker. If you don't tell, that I'm going to rape you. Right now. <laughs> uh, well, what else do you have? What are we at? What time are we at? Uh, How are we doing on that? 55 minutes. 55. Well, I think we should almost save. I don't know, because how long has this fucking movie been throat. out? The deep Oof. throat. Well, the yeah. deep throat scene from Elvis and everything mm-hmm. else you want to say about the Elvis movie. I don't know. I feel like I'm on a roll. We should probably. I feel like it might be the juice we need for next week to stay on a roll. You know, like if you just oh come out. Lazy. 
But if you feel like you're not going to have the same rant about it, then I guess go then ahead. And it's not a rant that's worth ranting about. I agree. Well, I just Folks, think we're going to save us some time next week. That's true. It is already written up, too. So and we have the Ben Shapiro interview. We're going to get that rescheduled. We're going to get him in. Yes. Spyro is going to work that out get with him. him. I won't talk to him until the interview. I will sit down next to him. I will say my piece to him in that context because I want it to all be recorded. I don't want people to be hearing multiple, you know, he said, she said, and Ben being the she in this situation <laughs> and he being me. I want you to hear it from he that I am going to. I'm going to epically own him mm -hmm. when I cross-examine him in debate format, public forum debate, Lincoln Douglas, rich tradition, just like his Jewish heritage and my Jewish heritage. But we're going to get into a ring. We're going to get into a fight, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. So we're going to get it resolved. Yeah. Political people should box, actually. That would be cool. Hassan. What do you think his number would be? Because on the one hand, he's so scrawny and little that he could never win in a boxing fight. On the other hand, he's Jewish. And a bag is a bag, boy. So if you <laughs> if you make some dough, yeah. What his number? Uh, how much he weighs? Is no, that... no, no. What his number to fight is? Like, oh, I'd have to make five million dollars. Oh, like, how, oh, I see, I see. Because he would get destroyed. But he also, if there's a guaranteed money clause or something, yeah, like, yeah. If he gets second, if he loses the fight, how much does he get? I guess is the question. I feel like he would actually to, be willing to do it for. Have to be like ten million, I think, at this point. I think he, honestly, I think he's such a pussy. He really wouldn't do it. I don't think he would either, actually. Yeah, I, I, I think ten million. If he were fighting like, um, what's that guy? Sam Cedar, maybe someone like Sam Cedar, or uh, uh, da David Pack. <clears throat> Excuse oh me, my David Packman. <laughs> yeah, David Packman. They just like don't even fight the whole time. Is David Packman? Does he still do stuff? Is he? Yeah, yeah, I've seen him in a few things. Pack I think attack. he has like a beard and shit now. He's trying to look cool. Uh. Can't the only believe. David Pakman thing I've ever watched, well, maybe as I remember watching him with like Richard Spencer or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's like, why couldn't we be friends? No, I'm just kidding. I don't remember what he said. <laughs> I go, go look that up. That's a classic. David Pakman versus <laughs> David Pakman. I'm sorry. Versus uh, Dick Spence. Dicky Spence. Maybe we should have Richard Spencer on the show. You can go to the gay the gay club and get him on. Oh, I thought of something else. Did you see the, uh, and maybe this is old news. This could be like two years old and I'm not saying anything. Uh, new here, but have you seen the Rick Roll advertisement? Not to Rick Roll you right now, not to make you lose the I game. I think I saw it in like a uh, a short, but I'm gonna pull it up right now. Just look it up on Google Images, and then we can try to find it after this. Okay, okay. I mean, I guess I can imagine like a Rick Roll. Can you explain it to me? Yeah, it's the same thing as a regular Rick Roll, but now he's like way older, and he's okay. just cashing in on the fact that his name and likeness has been used forever. He probably mm. doesn't make much from it but it's definitely the reason he's relevant yeah i remember d getting rick rolled i remember being like in third grade and it was like new zelda game coming out and i just like didn't understand what was going on i just like click on the thumbnail and then that song would play and i was just like i don't this isn't zelda i what did the person put the wrong video in and the, it took me probably like maybe four rick rolls to understand what was going on so. Yeah, I didn't get it right away. There's that and then losing the game or whatever. I just had this kid in my fucking seventh grade, like social studies class. And he's like, hey, uh, you just lost the game. And I just was like, I don't get it. And he goes, if you think about the game, you lose the game. And I was like, I still don't get what the game is. So <laughs> I've never heard of that. You haven't heard of that? Uh -uh. That's like internet culture, like 101. Like that's like almost embarrassing for me to be talking about. Almost in the way that like talking about Rick rolling seriously uh -huh. is like kind of cringy. Like, oh, I Rick rolled somebody. People would be like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, yeah, no. It's like if you think of the game, you lose the game. That's the game. So it's like anytime you think of the game. Okay. So it's just like, how have you not heard of this? This is Maybe like, I have. I don't know. It's like not. <laughs> it's insane to me, but I mean, it's, I, it's I could stupid. see I could see someone coming up to me and saying that. And then I would just be like, OK, not I mean. I don't know. I, I don't know if I've... I've never heard of that. I'll, I'll go on record and say That's that. That's probably like entry time. number one on Know Your Meme or something. Wow. I guess I don't know a lot about memes. Well, no, I do. I definitely... I don't know. I don't well, that's care. what this show is going to be. This is a 12-part docu... Uh, Explaining memes to me. Pod, from, yeah, pod series where I'm going to explain memes so you know how to function in the world better. Because yeah. uh, as our waitress said at the... At the uh, gosh that was horrible but i like looked at you and i don't even know i think i still laughed or i did I laugh i laughed you turned your head which I is did. 
always how I know you're feeling embarrassment. Basically, our waitress comes up and what was her thing? Why did she say? <laughs> I don't know. First of all, we go to this this like Renaissance fair esque restaurant and we order. Okay, just making sure the mic was still working. I would kill the myself. butter beer. I know I'd be so pissed. The butter beer and. Because you're a big Harry Potter fan. Yeah, huge Harry Potter fan. Biggest wizard Potterhead. In, in town. Big Potterhead, yeah. And the waitress like just keeps getting all of our orders wrong. I feel like she didn't like we had to say it to her like twice. And she what was she wearing? She was wearing like a baseball hat, but on top it had like like a propeller. It was it wasn't a propeller. It was like, no. like leaves. Like it was a plant or something. Like yeah. plushy plush leaves on on top of it. Well, and the hat didn't fit her head because she no. had, she had a big fat head. And she had like big curly hair. Yeah. And so then the hat was just sitting on top of her head. Yeah. And it wasn't like around her skull at all. And it did have like some sort of bow on it. But yeah, so you ordered the butterbeer. She kept fucking up the orders. Mm -hmm. And then she said... She was... I don't know what prompted it, but I think maybe... Did you order like a large dude, drink? We, we, we are... We we're dying right now. We have to say what she said because this is been... Anyway, she's not getting the order right. And she goes, it really do be like that sometimes. Yeah. She said that you and me, the two Steves, made eye contact. And we're just... Yeah. I like couldn't even look at her for the rest of the night. Like, anytime said, I ordered anything, it was like I was looking away from her. Like, yes, I'll... Can I get whatever? She said something else, too, when she came back to our it's table. It's like, ah, yes, good sir. It was in the same vein <laughs> yeah, of yeah. like the... Ah, yes, dapper. I see you both are dutifully enjoying your beverages. It was in that same like line of why, do why did you just say like that? that? Why do why do people I think it's because of Reddit, honestly. I think it's like the internet. I don't know. People will like say something like that. It's it's like you know what it might be? It's like the Monty Python. I look, this is kind of interesting that this happened not too long ago. Um well, I was with like my wife and her family and we're watching the Holy Grail movie. And I was like, I've never seen this. And of course, anyone who is like a millennial and older, they're like, oh, it's the best thing ever. And I'm like, OK, well, I'll watch it. It's fine, whatever. And one of the first scenes is like that night scene. And I remember watching that as a kid on YouTube. It had to have been like one of the first like 50 videos on the website. And that just became like the fucking joke. It was like, that's a real like early meme that people would like toss around. And then they thought they were so funny because they would, oh, it's just a scratch. And then that stupid old English lingo just started being used across the internet. I, I feel like, I feel like it really, it truly was the worst on Reddit. Cause I would just remember like being in middle school or not middle school, high school, scrolling through like ask Reddit and people were like, LARPing in the Middle Ages on this stupid f gay app. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know what the origin is. I mean, it could be stuff like what got first uploaded on the internet was just put stuck forever, but mm -hmm. I feel like there's also just this disgusting underlying thing in American culture where we just like revere the British. Mm -hmm. It's not everybody. Like, I certainly don't. And, yeah. I'm, and I know you don't. Right. They make good things sometimes. They do. I like a lot of their game shows. I think a lot of their comedy sucks. Mm -hmm. Even like their surrealist stuff is like, which I mean, this is a whole other conversation probably, but like, you know, David Lynch makes like textbook, not textbook, but you know what I mean? It's surreal, right? Mm -hmm. Like their definition of surreal over there is like just weird shit happening. Like kind of how like the common parlance of the using the word surreal is, you know, so sort of XD random stuff mm -hmm. where there's like a talking squid or some bullshit that sits in a corner. Yeah. Like Mighty Boosh or... Anything that fucking Noel Fielding guy's in, you know he is if I showed you him, but he's mm -hmm. he's he's annoying. He's quirky. That's the shit. Quirky British people. Fuck him. Yeah. But we had a phase in high school where people started speaking in a British accent. It was like all the weird people, and like surely enough, they're the people that like Harry Potter or Disney or whatever. It's like the people that like become like autistically obsessed mm -hmm. with that stuff. They're the ones that are walking around doing like this British voice in high school. And she's like, stop. Yeah. stop it wasn't even funny because they're not making fun of them they're just saying like normal things in a yeah, yeah. voice all the time not for humor i had this friend in um high school he uh one time we were like walking by the like the laboratory it, like a science class and he was he goes what do you call that and i was like Ugh. you're a fucking faggot. like if you were trying to 
say to me that like you call it laboratory like you're fucking retarded i was like get the fuck away from me i like learned all of those tricks really early on and i never did them to people but then like i could suss people out right away because people like yeah where people are just like how do you say this it's like oh you say it like that <laughs> um, yeah i hate that she's like who gives a shit i'll say right. that i want muff yeah <laughs> all right i think we have hit the the magic the mana, the we magic potion. A, we went on a good roll there. I felt like it was better. We knew what we were talking about a little bit, and then we were able to just kind of riff it out. Yeah. Closing remarks. Do don't you, play video games. Oh. Listen to the garden. Eat. Oh. Oh. Eat. Oh. I got one. Steven. Or maybe you've got one. Are you going to say socials? Our accounts? Mother fricker. You, you could insert I need to sign into the stupid app. Oh, maybe we'll I'm put, signed in we'll on put, here. We'll put it into the episode description, the link yeah, to look in the description our, for what, social our Instagram, media. Our Instagram. And our Get Rich Quick Fund that definitely is for a good cause. Yes, 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 yes. It's our non-profit where um, the non-profit doesn't make profit, but we make the profit. The links will be in the description, so. Check it out. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.